Okay. Hello, my name is Matthew DeRusso, and I'd like to thank you for considering uh, my pitch uh, for the film It's Over. I believe this film has a lot of thought-provoking horror and suspense. I wrote this uh, not necessarily out of necessity, but from a dream, and... Uh, as a filmmaker, I'm always down to <laughs> stories that uh, challenge and or challenge conventional thinking uh, and pushes boundaries. Uh, I think it's over offers an opportunity to explore um, personal goals, a reality of uh, self-sacrifice. Uh, persistence and while keeping the audience basically to the edge of their seats I pretty much want this film to go to the other edge of their seats one of the things that I'm doing is uh, sort of kind of I would travel down to hell and wrestle a film away from the devil if it was a necessity uh, that was by Werner Hawes I feel like that this film is gonna go a little bit further than I want to and uh, or not that I want to that would convey what what would you do if something like this would happen to you in uh, real life and um, I, I just like to get into the pitch maybe uh, you would see it as a, a different thing uh, we're gonna start out with the script I guess uh, so on the log line I'm saying after a long night uh, this guy Angelo foggily wakes up from uh, partying hmm. and then uh, he finds a strange woman sprawled across the floor of it well in his bedroom and uh, I guess something's not right so it goes from his body aching all over sensitivity to the light uh, he tries really hard to escape the room and the sunrise um, in act one I'm sort of going to go with an opening act of being in the living room and in the living room it's sort of uh, my metaphor of what is happening empty glass uh, with a drip coming from it uh, that's to signify um, blood the loss of blood I'm going to use an empty bottle as being an empty vessel uh, the lady's shoes are one's laying down and one's standing up and I'm sort of kind of like a foot is in in death and out of death um, the soul showing is that she's teetering on death uh, Angelo's cowboy boots are standing up which sort of kind of goes into the fact of he's a stand-up person he's really rigid uh, organized um, also I'm gonna bring in a clock because the clock and the Sun are the antagonist uh, I, I mean it's sort of kind of a boy and girl film with the evil being uh, the vampire and the Sun rising and the woman laying on the floor being uh, unknown and then the clock the time what's left uh, I feel like that that's gonna be that introduction uh, but it's in the shoes so you know it's a woman and it's a man and you see the clock and then you see the empty bottle of wine and then you see the empty glass with a dribble dribble all right so in act two uh, this is the meat of the, the film because um, I'm, I believe that it's going to really be pushed into a different dynamic. Um, you got uh, Angelo laying in the bed. And basically, I believe, or, or from what I've written, he was attacked first. Uh, then uh, he's laying there dead and he wakes up 
as uh, a freshly bitten vampire. And he doesn't know that he's been bitten. So uh, I think that uh, the bedroom needs to be lavish as his personality. It should have multiple layers. Um, one of the color stamps that's in my swash is red, brown, black, and white. And so uh, it, it's dealing with, uh, I think it's just uh, the red is, it can be celebratory and uh, detrimental. Uh, stop, you know, everything that could really come across that way. But back to the story. Um, he's startled, he retreats, he advances to help the girl, he retreats when, he's a, when, when the sun or the twilight uh, reveals itself. And he doesn't have all of the, um, all of the things that vampires have, but it, it starts to reveal as time passes in the script, within the five minutes of the script. Um, he has the the eyes, and then it starts to develop more throughout the scene. So when he renders aid, he flings himself away from her once he sees the vampire. And then in his retreat, he is also finding that the twilight, the sunlight, um, is attacking him now there's two verses of this film he will be uh in reality it's it's damn near pitch black in the room but through his eyes uh everything's supernaturally bright so we have um two variations of shots uh which i think is quite complex we're going to use the blade shot this is in act two. So it's a lot of reveals and not a lot of time. Uh, once he realizes that he was hurt from helping the girl and he gets to the corner and then the light rays come through the window, he holds his hand up and then we see the, the, the sun's light turning pink and then uh, well, he has some type of burn or sensation of burning in which uh, he retreats back to the corner trying to be in the dark and then he uh, sees uh, basically his sanctuary under the bed so he goes and he dives under the bed to hide away from the sunlight all the while, he's still trying to come to what is happening to him. And then he sees the lady. And then he's figuring out what's going on with him. And then he has to escape. And he, he's, the door's open. Now, the room's bright, but behind the door is complete a void of darkness. So something internal, internally with him is saying he needs to escape to the door. And then he snaps back to saving the girl and getting to the door. So I think that when he's trying to come to terms either to uh, sacrifice himself to, you know, the pain that he's going to go through of, of, of saving her as well as himself, uh, he's having uh, a lot of uh, feelings against saving her and so he's going through these moments uh spiritually to uh save himself more so than to save her well um voices are heard in his mind as he looks at the darkness in the door and um he's trying he, he basically snaps out of it and then he's back to uh I am we, we being together, me and the girl, and then to escape together into the darkness. And he's thinking the bathroom because that's the darkest place in the house. There, unless you turn on the light, then you would be in the light. Um, then he's, he's countering against himself to find out about this vampire 
as well as his change. So uh, because of time premises, I'm not able to do the attempt, but uh, in the, the film itself, he is um, making these different attempts and failing. He covers his head with uh, cloth. He's um, trying to do different things to see if it will protect him from the twilight. Um, by this time, it's right before the sun rises. Uh, I would say time slows down, but when they get near the sun, it speeds up. It's rampant. So uh, when he does get the courage to leap out and save um, this woman, it's too late. He, he jumps out and uh, he bursts into flames. The kicker is the girl was attacked by the vampire as well, but I guess the vampire didn't get done, so her change was a little bit slower. So when he does get to her, the rays of the sun cause him to burst, and then her eyes start to glow, and then she uh, goes into a, a same situation he went through, but because of the explosion, it presses the door closed and it becomes an incubator of pain. What we open with is what we are going to close with, except for the different sounds in the background of the pain, of the screams, of uh, everything that's happening to him. Um, it's gonna be off camera. And so the light of the sun, now the sun's crested the house and it's shearing through a slit in the blinds. Actually behind me, I'm, I'm gonna shoot uh, in this room behind me. So um, I'm going to set the blinds up so, and then I'm going to fog the room to, um, and, and sort of kind of simulate uh, dust uh, and um, go over the shoes again, go to the boots again, and then to the wine glass, which is now dry. And uh, that closes the film. I hope uh, this conveys to you, and I hope I'll be able to shoot it in the next two months. Um, this is going to be a solid film, and uh, I've got the locations. Uh, we're going to shoot at my mother's house. She has a lot of old antique furniture. Uh, I think I went over my color. Browns. Yeah, black, brown, red, and... Um, white uh, the, the girl shoes black the browns of the boots the sofa the bed posts the reds uh, the blanket that he's laying on is a designer blanket like a paisley and it's maroon uh, the top of his boot is red um, and the wine is a uh, purplish, but it's not going to be wine. It's going to be uh, more like a purple Kool-Aid or something. I'll, I'll sort that out, but it will be uh, a liquid of color. And the white, he wears a white blazer uh, or a white shirt when he's laying in the bed. And the girl uh, has, or, uh, has a black dress on. And so... Um, I don't know if I have enough time to do the backstory on them, but uh, the girl is a crush from a bar, and he's a failed salesman. I guess this would be considered a secret. Uh, he continuously tries to communicate with the girl throughout the script, and uh, <laughs> I want to say the vampire is whimsical. He, he's, he's cynical. He's not a... Uh, uh, there's no definition of him. I, I didn't really want to focus on the definition uh, of the vampire or the monster. I uh, just wanted to be the same glowing eyes but prolific against Angelo's glowing eyes. And they're a little bit brighter as he changes. 
and then once he's a full vampire then he has the absolute glow that he saw with the vampire in the door and so it it it, it it's going to be a trip trying all these different tricks i i'm going to uh, steal from it would be you steal I'm gonna borrow ideas how about that I'm gonna borrow ideas from different films that I've seen uh, the eye light is a uh, 45 degree angle two-way glass to with a book lamp to make the glowing eyes for the retina um, the sheer light the sheer light uh, is going to be from inception with the dust and going over the space shuttle, but I wanted to go over the shoes uh, And the shots in the bedroom are from a number of films. I mean I'm, I think I'm gonna go a medium close-up majority uh, because of the limitations on the time uh, I probably have about five full full-size shots of uh, the vampire um her laying on the floor and him standing up but I believe everything else will be a medium close-up uh, medium shot maybe two times but extreme close-ups and micro shots uh, are gonna are gonna really set the tone of the film and um, I, I guess the Sun uh, I have uh, I know I said it's about 144 shots, but I'm trying to trim it down to 75. And the scenes, it's only two. And uh, I think that's about it. So uh, my name's Matthew DeRusso. I just reviewed uh, my pitch on uh, It's Over. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And... Uh, Please, I need your help if there's any shot contingents. I would like to send you the shots as I shoot them. And uh, I'll be as creative as possible. Thank you and uh, have a good evening.